All right, welcome back to another installment of the Wide Ride Podcast. I'm Manny Navarro, Miami Hurricanes beat writer for The Athletic. I'm in my hotel room here in Houston, Texas. We're about uh, seven hours away from kickoff. The Canes and Texas A&M are going to be facing off in a big primetime game on national television. Uh, last night, I actually got a chance to go out to a high school football game here in Houston. First time I've been to a high school football game in Texas in about 14 years. Uh, I covered the uh, Miami Northwestern South Lake Carroll game back in 2008 when both teams were number one and number two in the country, and it was a lot of fun. Last night, I had a lot of fun again. I, it was only for a half. I wasn't out there the whole night, but I got a chance to uh, go watch a young man who's committed to the University of Miami, one of uh, the top tight ends in the country, and that's what we brought on the show today. That would be Reed McKeska of Bridgeland High School here in the Houston area. Uh, Reed, thanks for coming on, man, and, and uh, chatting some football with me. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you. Hey, man, you know, I was uber impressed. Again, I only got to watch a half, and I, and I apologize. I ended up leaving at halftime, but I saw you do your thing, and, and you were, I mean, you were pancaking guys. Uh, you know, uh, you, you were catching balls. You were setting up teammates for scores, blocking for running backs, moving in motion. They even faked the handoff to you on an end around. I saw that in the first half. Um, but tell me what I missed in the second half, because I, I heard it was pretty good for you. Yeah, I mean, second half, I mean, we lost, but second half, we came out really good. Um, they got me set up in the vertical passing game. So I got a couple like longer receptions. I think I ended the game with like five or six catches for 60, 70 yards. Wow. So um, yeah, I had, a, had a lot more pancakes in the second half too, but it ended up being like a really good game. But unfortunately we lost. Yeah, I know. I, that's one of those things, right? Where individually you feel good about yourself and, and what you did and how you played, but your team loses and so it always sort of takes something away from from it um you you guys i think won your first game if i'm not mistaken and then you've, you've dropped i think now three in a row good team last year uh, i think you were 11 and three right got to the regional final um when you have when you get off to a start like this uh mentally how do you sort of recover oh uh, i don't know because like we're, we're not really used to losing but mm -hmm. we have i think uh like nine out of 22 starters are hurt right now. So we had to move up like a ton of JV kids and quarterback. We had to bring up a quarterback from JV and they're rotating quarterbacks. So, so it's just, it's tough on the offense and tough on the defense. Like losing's hard, but I think we're, we've been working hard. We're going to try to turn it around for district. I think we'll still be able to make playoffs and then just like kind of go from there, honestly. Yeah. Nine out of 22, when you're dealing with injuries, man, it can really put a strain on you. I don't think I saw you leave the game in the first half. Like, I, I know you weren't out there playing defense, but, I mean, you guys play a fast pace. You got to be in great shape to be able to do that. Yeah, I checked the huddle last night. Now we ran 87 plays on offense, and I set out one play. I took my – after, like, a long run, I was like, Just give me give me one play. So, yeah, I played 86 plays, and it's, it's really tiring. But, yeah, we're all in really good shape. What's the key to getting football ready for you? Um, you know, what is your off-season conditioning like? What do you focus on when you when you play in a fast-paced offense like that? Uh, I mean, it's kind of like the basic uh, off-season stuff. I did like a ton of lifting. I ran track in the spring, and over the summer, like our school has workouts at six a.m. Monday through Friday, like six to nine mm -hmm. every day. We've been working all summer and. Like whenever you like you really don't stop like working out just like kind of get you in good shape permanently so when we've been working all year like year round so when the season comes it's just kind of like second nature to be doing all the running and so I, I was gonna say maybe it's the basketball skills because i saw that clip of you doing some some dunks where where you're trying to get your name into the dunk contest and and uh, i was impressed and i'm thinking man this guy's got to play hoops too or something right like i mean the amount of running that you do to just stay in shape and get up every play and just get back to the line of scrimmage takes a lot. Yeah, uh, last year was my first year like not playing basketball because uh, I wanted to run track so I could get faster and just focus on speed and stuff. But yeah, I've, I've always loved basketball. It was like my first first love. I, I got to be honest. I, I'm from Miami. I've covered Miami football for many, many years. Um, that stadium that you guys play in, I mean, that is an unbelievable facility. Um, I know. I got to imagine, I mean, I, maybe you've grown up in Texas your whole life. I don't know how many other stadiums you've been to, but that you guys are pretty blessed to have what you have to, to go and play for every Friday night. Yeah, I, I moved to Bridgeland last year, last summer. 
So it was my first time playing in it last year, and it was definitely kind of like mind blowing. It's like 15,000. It's usually filled up every time. It's like like Texas six day football is just like different, honestly. <laughs> what, where were you playing at before, and what was it like? What, how would you describe it compared to, to that stadium you get to play in now? I was at Friendswood High School, which is like South Houston, like the Galveston area. And I was mostly just playing basketball back then, and then started playing football like last year. Okay, so uh, so this stuff, you you know, it's a step up uh, what you get to play in over here. Um, I'm curious about the, the recruiting. You committed to Miami way back in June. I spoke to you, I think, a few days before you made your commitment to Miami. Known at the time, I remember you telling me, well, they're going to take two guys, and I feel good about that. Well, they ended up adding a third guy, which um, as, a, as a commitment, I got to imagine you're like, okay, wow, that's a lot of guys to take. But I see you wearing the Miami hat. You seems like you're fully committed to the game. Yeah, I'm, I'm committed. Man, it really it doesn't matter how many guys there are. Like in college, you're going to have to compete regardless. And they use tight ends a ton. So it's like we're all going to be on the field anyways, getting fed. So it's like not really a big deal. What have you thought of the Josh Gaddis offense? It seems, you know, the two tight end sets, like you said, they, they, they're playing a lot of tight ends anyway. What have you thought of, of the offense so far? Um, I loved it at Michigan. I think, I think they've low-key been, like, kind of holding back some stuff the first two games against like Bethune and uh Southern Miss or whatever but I think I think they're gonna be using them a lot more going forward but I think like, they just haven't showed their their full hand yet kind of preparing for and yeah that's what I'm expecting tonight I think it's gonna be sort of a tight end fest a lot of especially with Xavier Restrepo out for Miami and, and them needing Will Mallory and Elijah and, and some of those other guys to get going um, I would imagine those will be the primary guys in the offense um, but I got to imagine, you know, what you know of it, right? Because you, you, I'm sure you get some inside intel from talking to those guys. Uh, you, you must be really excited thinking I, I can maximize my talents playing in that offense. Yeah, I think Gaddis is a great coach, Coach Field and Coach Cristobal. Like they all work with the tight end. So I'll just be getting like really developed there and kind of maximize my skill set. Whenever it's my time to step up, I'll be prepared and ready to go. I know it's homecoming tonight, um, so I'm sure you're probably going to that. Um, but are you going to be checking the phone, watching Miami highlights, or what do you what do you do when they they're going to be playing at the same time you're at homecoming? Yeah, I mean, I think we're going to the dance for a little bit, but after after that, uh, me and my friends we're definitely going to watch the game, catch what we can, because that will definitely be a game to watch. Yeah. Um, what's your gut tell you? I mean, Texas A&M, you, you, I mean, you, you've got a former, you know, your former quarterback there at Bridgeland, right? He's, he's, he's over there at A&M. You guys are buddies. Yeah. Um, rough start for them with that loss to App State. What, what do you, what do you think happens tonight? I think Miami comes out and whoops them. Really? Okay. A lot of confidence. What gives yeah. you the confidence? What do you think uh, the, the key to the game for Miami? Uh, I just think we, we got way better coaching with Coach Chris Ball and them. I think they're way more prepared, more aggressive, and just like a more talented team that has more to prove than AM and coming on the road and all that. Right. Um, I'm curious about the recruiting process for you. Uh, you obviously were committed to Clemson before, then you came to Miami. Schools don't ever stop committing you to, to you know, recruiting you rather until you sign on the dotted line. Who still comes after you hard? Who calls you and says, hey, man, we really, we really need you? Uh, I mean, really, no one right now. I mean, I kind of shut it down. I'm not mm -hmm. talking to old coach. I just like respect my decision and all that. I'm locked in with Miami, so I'm, I, if you do text me, I'm not going to answer it because um, wow. it's not yeah. yeah. So this is done for you. I mean, um, I guess what would what would have to happen for that to change? Miami go out and get a fourth tight end in the class or a fifth? I don't think they do that, but I'm just suggesting. Like in, in other words, is there anything you think that could shake your confidence? I don't know. I mean. To be honest, I haven't even really been thinking about like recruiting. I've just been like really locked in with our season. But I mean, like the recruiting stuff, I was, I was pretty into it like over the summer and stuff. But now that like my season's here, I, I to be honest, I really haven't thought about it at all. I've just been kind of focused on my team. Yeah. Physically, how much has your body changed just junior to senior year? You talked about how hard you work in the weight room. I've seen the video. You were, they, you, I think, dropping some some big weights there. Uh, just what? It, how has your body sort of changed in the last year? Um, yeah, I like I lifted a ton and ran tracks. So I've gotten like a lot bigger. Mm -hmm. I think I well over thirteen pounds and really got a ton faster too. And 
just been able to gain like more body control and all that. Okay. So, what are you up? What are you up to now? And wait. I'm about two thirty four, two thirty five right now. And, uh, and and how fast are you? If you when you judge it, do you do the hundred hundred meters. What do you? How do you sort of judge speed? So my, my best hundred time from spring was like eleven seven or eleven eight, and then uh, we did forties, and I think like March and I got four six nine, wow. and then that was, that was my fastest time. Yeah. Wow, that's so. That's something I'm sure you're probably pretty proud of when you put in the work to see the results. It, it, it means a lot to you. Do, you. do you have a private instructor, or is it just kind of team activities? Is there any anybody individually you work with? Uh, no, I just I just work out at the school. I don't, I don't really have a private trainer or anything like that. Okay. Um. So what uh, what's the goal for you the rest of the way here, man? Obviously, I know you you want to start winning some games. That's probably what matters to you most. But uh, individually. Are there any benchmarks, anything that you said to yourself, my senior year, I wanna I wanna accomplish this? Um I mean my main benchmark is to stay healthy and come January I'm ready to enroll and get to work in college. I mean uh, senior season is it's important, but not as important as staying healthy for college. But then yeah, I mean, I wanna win more games and I like, get a ton of catches and touchdowns and all that, but I mean, it's high school. Yeah the real things coming so yeah mentally are you almost ready for it like in other words are you if you kind of like i can't wait for the season to end so i can go to go to miami and roll and, and kind of get to the next next phase in life or, or, or are you still kind of trying to maybe cherish the last couple of moments of high school oh, i'm definitely excited but i definitely want to cherish the last moments of high school too because i see you only get to go to high school once and so i've been hanging out with my friends and stuff just enjoying the last couple months yeah Tell us something about you off the field because we know the, the athlete that you are, but what, what are you into, man? You have a favorite TV show, you have a hobby, something something uh, that shows us a little bit of your personality, Reed. Uh, I mean, I'm not a big hobby guy. Uh, like if, if I'm not like doing, like football takes most of my time, but if I'm not doing that, I'm like hanging out with my friends and my family and uh, just doing stuff like that, you know, but I don't have like a specific hobby, like coin collecting or anything like that. Just. <laughs> No, no fishing, no uh, no hunting, any of that stuff. It's definitely like a fish. Okay. I like being out. I'd say that's a, that's a hobby. I'm curious. You know, obviously, I, I know the team, the Miami. You know, they try to get guys on message board. You know, not message boards, but like, um, what's the word? I'm like threads, like message threads, right? With, with other recruits. Are are you on any of those? And who do you maybe talk to the most as part of the recruiting class? Oh yeah, we have, we have a group chat um of like the commits in this class so yeah um, we all kind of stay connected yeah I'm, I'm curious have you forged a friendship with, with any of those guys yet i mean it's you're the only uh texas commitment in this class i'm sure it's, you know distance probably plays a factor but i'm uh, just curious if you forged any friendships you know maybe with uh their quarterbacks or or uh, any of the other tight ends oh yes yeah, so i'd say i talked to them. i haven't really met any of them for in person I've met uh, Jackson Carver. I think he's a great kid. I think we're friends. Um, I mean, other than that, I really haven't met any other guys, but I've texted with him and stuff. I think we have a good relationship, but mm -hmm. I've really met him in person. Are, are you going to be taking, uh, I don't know, did you take an official over the summer to Miami or was that an unofficial? That was your official already. A any chance you go back for a game at some point? Uh, yes, sir. We're going to try to make the Florida State game. Okay. And is that a big weekend for all the other recruits, or do you not know? Uh, that's just uh, we uh, we have a ton of Saturday games, and that's kind of the best one we could make. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Well, listen, Reed, it, it was nice uh, talking to you. It was nice uh, getting to watch you play in person. I always sort of enjoy that that aspect of it. I got to tell uh, my listeners that you were very engaged, man. Like I didn't see much slacking off. Very serious. Very business like. Uh, where do you think you picked up that mentality from? Uh, definitely the coaches at our school are kind of like no nonsense. They get us locked in before the game. And uh, like if you're out of line or, or goofing off, like either a coach or a teammate is going to hold you accountable to that. Because once the game starts, it's all business. You got to do your assignment and just do it to the best of your ability. So that's kind of my mindset is do your job and win the game. Well, Miami fans, you got a good one here in Reed McKeska. Certainly focused, ready to go, and uh, enjoy the rest of your senior year, man. It, uh, you, you deserve to go out on a good note there uh, with all the hard work you put in. But thanks, Reed. I appreciate it.
brother. Appreciate you.